Hello students. This lesson or this video is for uh, chapter 2 lesson 5 so it's lesson 2.5. The title of this lesson is solving equations using addition or subtraction where our objective is to well solve equations using addition or subtraction. The vocabulary for this lesson is inverse operations and equivalent equations. So we start off with horses. One method for weighing a horse is to put it in a trailer of a known weight and weigh the horse and trailer together on a truck scale. As you'll see in example three, the horse's weight can then be found by using an inverse operation to solve an equation. So we'll find out about weighing horses in example three. Here's our first vocabulary word, inverse operation. Well, inverse operations are two operations that undo each other such as addition and subtraction. So addition undoes subtraction, and subtraction undoes addition. When you perform the same inverse operation on each side of an equation, you obtain an equivalent equation. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. So we're going to find out about how to use inverse operations to do what our objective is, and that is to solve equations that involve addition and subtraction. So let's go to this next slide here and we have the subtraction property of equality. In words we would say that subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So uh, pretty much that's one way of saying what you do to one side you do to the other. Let's uh, think about this real quick as we get into solving equations and the idea of properties of equality. If we had a scale, and let me try to draw a scale here, and just for the sake of trying to make it, there we go. So if we had a scale, and over on one side we had, let me see how my drawing goes today, we had a block, and if we had another block, not doing too bad. And then in order for it to be balanced, I would have to have two blocks over here as well. All right. And draw one more block there. All right. So if you had two blocks and assuming that the blocks are the same weight, the scale would be balanced. Now, if you wanted to keep it balanced, if you were to add blocks to it, like let's say maybe these blocks, uh, blue blocks, let's say that a blue block, and I'm not doing a very good job of that one. There we go. Let's say that a blue block is equal to five pounds, right? Then we would have 10 pounds on each side, right? Uh, let's say that we wanted to add a block to it. Let's say that we had red blocks and that red blocks were, oh, maybe three pounds. So if we wanted to add a block to each side, we would ha and we wanted to keep it balanced, of course, if we are going to add three pounds to one side, in order to keep it balanced, we would also have to add three pounds to the other side as well. And likewise, so we wanted to add something to one side, and as long as we added it to the other side as well, then it stays balanced. However, if we wanted to take something away, let's say we wanted to subtract 5 pounds from each side. Well, if I took 5 pounds off of one side, in order to keep it balanced, I would have to take 5 pounds off the other side as well. So that's the concept that we're going to look at here. And let me go ahead and get an erase job done there. There we go. So in numbers, we say that if x plus 3 equals 5, then we know that x plus 3 minus 3 equals 5 minus 3. And notice that what we've done is we've added a negative 3 to each side because the 3 is related to the x through addition. Op the opposite operation or the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, and we're subtracting the very number that we wish to get rid of. Now, 
the textbook puts this in a horizontal format. By horizontal, what I'm saying is, is that they just kind of keep it all on one line and work it across. I kind of like to work my problems more vertically. So if I had x plus 3 equals 5, I want to work up and down. So instead of working the sentence across that way, instead I'm going to go ahead and work it kind of going in a downward fashion instead. So the x is tied to the 3 through addition. The opposite operation, or the inverse operation, is subtraction. The number I want to get rid of is 3, so that's what I'm going to subtract. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, just like on the scale. So I'm putting negative 3 on each side. Think of the equal sign as the center of the scale. And what's on the left and what's on the right would be what's on the left and what's on the right of the scale. So the 3's would cancel each other, leaving me with just x. And 5 minus 3 is 2, so I would get x equals 2 just like that you get over here as well. If we look at this using algebra instead, where we just use letters, they're saying that if you have x plus a equals b, then if you subtract a from each side, and we're subtracting because subtraction is the inverse operation of addition, the a is tied to the x through addition, we're subtracting a because a is the value that we wish to get rid of, and what we do to one side, we do to the other. So the positive a and the negative a will cancel each other, leaving us with just x. And then over here we end up with, well, we don't know what b and a is, so we can't actually solve it, but we just say b minus a, which is what you see right here as well. So in all of our work that we do, I'll be demonstrating all of the uh, examples working in a up and down uh, vertical concept as opposed to a horizontal concept. Okay, moving along, looking at the next slide, we have example one, and in, it says to solve an equation using subtraction. And the reason that we're using subtraction is because, well, the problem involves addition and the opposite operation is subtraction. And I'm hesitating because I should be saying inverse the inverse operation, but I have this the tendency to use the word opposite, inverse, opposite, pretty much the same thing. For vocabulary purposes, understand that the correct term is the inverse operation. I just have a tendency to use the word opposite as opposed to inverse. So um, I'll go ahead and try to stop stumbling upon that fact. I just wanted to put that out there. So in this case here, the we see that the 9 is related to the x through addition. The so we're going to rewrite it right here. We re rewrite x plus 9 equals negative 3. So the x is tied to the 9 through addition. The opposite operation of addition is subtraction. We're going to subtract 9 because that's the number we wish to get rid of. What we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. Positive 9, negative 9 will cancel each other, leaving us with just x. And negative 3 minus 9 equals negative 12. So the solution is negative 12. Now, you can always check your answer and make sure that you got the correct answer by substituting that solution back into the original problem and see if you get a true statement. And we've done that before in uh, some IXL activities of finding out, does the solution satisfy the equation? And that's pretty much what we're doing here. So we take the original problem, x plus 9 equals negative 3. We substitute in the solution of negative 12 that we got. Negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3. Bring down the negative 3. Negative 3 equals negative 3, so the solution checks out. We're good to go. Now, if I were to do this vertically instead of horizontally, we would start with x plus 9 equals negative 3. I would see that the 9 is tied to the x through addition. The opposite operation is subtraction. I want to subtract the very number I wish to get rid of, which is 9. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So I'm going to subtract 9 there as well. Now on the left side of the equation, the 9's will cancel each other, leaving me with x. Negative 3 minus 9, well that's the same as negative 3 minus 9 is equal to negative 3 plus negative 9. So we're adding two negatives. That means it's going to get even more negative. So we actually add them together, 
and we get 12, so it is negative 12. So that is a demonstration of doing this vertically as opposed to horizontally. Now, for the addition property, well, hopefully you're guessing that it's like the opposite of the subtraction property, right? Same difference, but we're going to use it to undo subtraction because subtraction is the inverse operation of addition. So just as you can use the subtraction property of equality to solve an equation involving addition, you can use the addition property of equality to solve an equation involving subtraction. The addition property of equality, in words, we say that adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. Now here we have the horizontal arrangement of it. If x minus 3 equals 5, then x minus 3 or then x minus 3 plus 3 equals 5 plus 3, and you'll find that x equals 8. If I do this vertically instead of horizontally, I would have x minus 3 equals 5. The 3 is tied to the x through subtraction. The opposite operation is addition. I'm going to add the very number I wish to get rid of, which is 3, and what I do to one side, I do to the other. So the negative 3 and the positive 3 are going to cancel each other out, leaving me with just x, and 5 plus 3 is 8. And you'll see that I get the same solution of 8 as they get here. Now, if I do that using algebra instead of actual numbers, I would have x minus a equals b, and the a is tied to the x through subtraction, so the opposite operation is addition. I'm going to add the very value I wish to get rid of, which in this case is the variable a. And what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. The a's are going to cancel each other out, right? leaving me with just x on the left. And on the right, well, I can't actually add b and a together because I don't know what the values are. So I would represent that with b plus a, which you see the same thing here. So here's an example on this one here, and if I write this vertically as opposed to horizontally, like the textbook has it, I would start with 23. I'm going to rewrite the problem. Equals y, that's equal sign there, equals y minus 11. So I need to get the y by, the cell, by itself. The goal here is to isolate the variable. We want to get it to where the variable is all by itself on one side, and we have a solution on the other side. So the y is tied to the 11 through subtraction. The opposite operation is addition. I'm going to add the very value which I would want to get rid of, which is 11. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. After I do that, the negative 11 and the positive 11 will cancel each other out, leave me with just y. And 23 plus 11 is indeed 34. Notice that this time the variable is on the right instead of the left. And if we had a scale, it really doesn't matter which side something's on, right? The y could be over here, and the 34 could be over here. Or we could also balance that with the 34 on the left and the y on the right. It matters not which side it's on. If you, whenever you enter your answers on, uh, on a worksheet or on, well, we use IXL, uh, if you wanted to, you could flip that around and do y equals 34 and enter that in, and it would be the same answer. There would be two equivalent equations uh, because it's the same solution. Example 3, writing and solving an equation. So we're here with the story about the horse. So you weigh a horse using the method described on page 91. The weight of the trailer alone is... 2,150 pounds. So that is the weight of an empty trailer. The combined weight of the horse and the trailer is 3,375 pounds. So that's once you put the horse and the trailer in weight, that's what you get here. So the question is, what is the weight of the horse? Well, we're going to let W represent the weight of the horse, and this is in pounds. So we're using a W because the word weight starts with W. Could use an H, would be good also work well. It matters not, but W stands for weight, so we're going to let W represent the horse's weight, write a verbal model, then use the verbal model to write an equation. So we know that we have the horse's weight plus the weight of the trailer, which we see here is 
2,150. And together, those two have a sum of 3,375 pounds. And then we just go through what is known as a one-step equation because there's just one step to the to the solution. In this case, the 2,150 is tied to the W through addition. So we're going to use the opposite operation, which is subtraction. We're going to subtract the very value we wish to get rid of, which is 2,150. What we do to one side, we do to the other. The positive 2,150 and the negative 2,150, these two are going to cancel each other out and give us a total of zero. So we're left with just the W. And then we subtract the 2,150 from the amount of 3,375. That would give us a difference of 1,225. So therefore, the weight of the horse is 1,225 pounds. Interesting note over here on uh, that I got out of the textbook there in the real world. Horses. One of the smallest horses is the Shetland Pony. If a typical Shetland Pony is weighed using the trailer, in example three, the combined weight of the pony and the trailer would be about 2,550 pounds. But how much does a Shetland Pony weigh? My sister had a Shetland Pony whenever I was a small child. I had an old Welsh Pony. But um, so the combined weight, the combined weight is two is uh, two thousand five hundred fifty. So we're gonna go the weight of the. Uh, let's just use W for weight again. The weight of the Shetland plus the weight of the trailer. In this case, remember the trailer weighs two thousand one hundred fifty pounds, and together their combined weight is two thousand. 550 pounds. So the 2150 is tied to the W through addition. We're going to use the opposite operation, subtraction. We're going to subtract the very value we wish to get rid of, which is 2150. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And then the next step is to go into our subtraction. These two will cancel each other out, leaving us with just W. And then we, now we need to subtract here, and we should be okay. It's all lined up. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 5 minus 5 is 0. 5 minus 1 is 4. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So therefore, the weight of the Shetland Pony is 400 pounds, which actually is only about one-fourth of the weight of the regular horse. Here's a checkpoint. Let's look at our checkpoint, see about a couple of these. You'll see you start going through them real quick, like here. And uh, so let's just take a look at that. Rewrite the problem, x plus 8. I always encourage my students to rewrite the problem, start off on their notes. The 8 is tied to the x through addition. The opposite operation is subtraction. The value we wish to get rid of is 8, so that's what we're going to subtract. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Now we go ahead and do our subtraction. These two will cancel each other out, leaving us with just x. And 19 minus 8 is 11. So for the first one, x equals 11. Number 2 is negative 7 equals y plus 13. The, we want to get the y all by itself. That is to say, we wish to isolate the variable. So the 13 is tied to the y through addition. The opposite operation is subtraction. 13 is the number we wish to get rid of, so that's the number we're going to subtract. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. So after that, the 13s will cancel each other, leaving us with y. This is negative 7, negative 7 minus 13, which is the same as negative 7 plus a negative 13. We see they're both negative. We're adding two negative numbers, so they're going to get more negative. And 7 plus 13 is indeed 20, so our answer is negative 20. Let's go ahead and do number 4. 26 equals p minus 61. So we wish to get p all by itself. That is to say we wish to isolate the variable. The value of 61 is tied to p through subtraction. The opposite operation is addition. We're going to add the very number we wish to get rid of, which is 61. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. After we 
get all that done, then these two will cancel each other out, leaving us with just the P. And then when 26 plus 61, well, 6 plus 1 is 7, and 2 plus 6 is 8, so we end up with P equals 87, which is my favorite tight ends number, Travis Kelsey. So, guided practice, here we are at our review. Copy and complete. Addition and subtraction are blank operations. What type of operations do we call these? I know in my demonstration I used the word opposite operations, but the actual uh, academic vocabulary word for this is inverse operations. They are indeed inverse operations. Which property of equality would you use to solve x minus 5 equals 7? And explain. Well, I would use addition. And my explanation for why I would use addition is, is that, the, well, the 5 is tied to the x through subtraction, and the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So that's why I would use the additive property of equality, because it's subtraction. Now, let's see. We, I'll, I'll pick two of these. Let's do number 6. It's a subtraction one. So right here we're going to do number 6. So I have y minus 7 equals negative 2. The 7 is tied to the y through subtraction. The opposite operation is addition. 7 is the value I wish to get rid of. And what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. Now the 7s will cancel each other out, leaving me with just y. And negative 2 plus 7. Well, if I'm on a number line and I'm down here at negative 2, and I'm going to add 7, all right? takes two of them to get me to zero. That leaves me with five more to get me to a positive five. So it's going to be positive five. Another way to look at that is negative two plus seven. Well, we're adding an opposite and a negative, so we actually subtract. So we're going to do seven minus two to get five. And since seven is has the greater absolute value and it's positive, the answer is going to be positive. So y equals five. And let's find one with addition. Here we go. Let's do number 7. So rewrite the problem. 16 equals A plus 25. The 25 is tied to the A through addition. The opposite operation is subtraction. I'm going to subtract the very number I wish to get rid of, which is 25. And what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. Now I need to go ahead and do my subtraction. The 25 is going to cancel each other, leaving me with A. And now I have 16 minus 25, so that's 16 minus 25, which is the same as 16 plus negative 25. And so now I'm adding uh, positive and negative numbers, which means I'm actually going to subtract. So I need to know the difference between 25 minus 16. And well, 25 minus 10 would be 15, so this is 16 so uh must be uh, 9, right? And I can double check that going up. 9 plus 16 is indeed 25. So, yep, it's 9. And the 25 has the greater absolute value, so it's negative. So my answer is going to be negative. So I end up with negative 9. Uh, if I want to, I could rewrite that. A equals negative 9. Just kind of flip them around there. And then error analysis is the last thing we'll look at. Describe and correct the error in solving x plus 8 equals 10. So we got x at plus 8 equals 10. Well, the 8 is tied to the x through addition, so we should use subtraction. Yep. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Oh, there's the problem right there. They added 8 instead of subtracting 8. It should have been minus 8. That means the 8s would have canceled each other, leaving us with x. And this should have been 10 minus 8, not 10 plus 8. So that would be 2. And we could always check and see, is that answer correct? If we go back in and plug in for x, we plug in 2 into it. And then we see that indeed 8 plus 2 equals 10. So that would check out. All right. So that pretty much covers everything on solving equations using addition or subtraction. Remember, it's all about using inverse operations. And if it's addition, we use subtraction. If it's subtraction, we use addition. We add or subtract whatever number it is we try to, we're trying to get rid of. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Thank you.